Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Lobo. I'm coming to you from my backyard here in Denver. And uh, I'm going through my rigging on my camping equipment, and I'm trying to find uh, sensible solutions for uh, storing paracord. Uh, paracord, if you're not familiar, is pretty much a space-age material. It's synthetic. This here is 50 feet. Um, it's extremely strong. Uh, if you're going camping or hiking or anything outdoors, you should always have you some paracord because you a thousand uses for it. Uh, what's cool about it is, is inside of this black sleeve here is actually a rope composed of five very strong fibers and you can break those apart. So you can turn five, 50 feet of rope into 250, five times 50. And if you want, you can also include the discarded sleeve, the outside, which is strong in its own right. So you have potentially 300 feet of rope here. Very important, very good stuff. Um, I got this for eight dollars, eight fifty at a local sporting goods store. So it's it's, it's available. Um, go out and get you some if you don't have some. It's, it's fun to play with. Um, so on the cord, I'm trying to find a way to store this um, and ha have function with the storage. I've gone online and looked at. Uh, there's thousands of videos on this, and so there's really two schools of thought. You can take it and you can make it into a functional brace bracelet. Uh, by braiding it, uh, you can do a necklace, um, um, many different things. The downside to that is, is you can only use about 10 to 15 feet in most cases. And if I'm out somewhere and I get caught without my tent and I only have 10 feet of cord, I'm not sure how I'm going to build a survival shelter. Whereas if I have 50 feet of cord, uh, we can get it done and no problem. Uh, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, the other side of it is, is the, the storage of the 50 foot is generally, you know, wrap it up a standard wrap and throw it in your closet. Well, if I'm camping for an extensive amount of times, my closet is my tent. Anything in my tent, outside of my tent, on the campsite, needs to be multifunctional, even if it's in storage, or that's the goal anyway. So, uh, I didn't see any solutions to my problems that I was having with the paracord, and I've also been dealing with two other issues on the camping situation, which is number one, my dogs. Uh, I got uh, one very rambunctious dog, he likes to go exploring. Um, I need to find a way to keep them on a leash and also uh, do a dog run, something sensible. Uh, I have the equipment now to do that, and I have done that, but it's a pain in the tail. Uh, the other situation I'm having is, is in addition to camping, um, I'm prospecting, I'm looking for gold, and that requires pretty much a full pack out of all the equipment I'm going to need to do that properly and, and effectively and efficiently. And so with that, I'm faced with the challenge of I need to be able to get to the river and I'm going to have my uh, regular backpack on me instead of tent, but then I have to run back to wherever I'm at, find the gold, uh, my gold backpack if it's in the car or I left it somewhere uh, to go retrieve it and come back. So I'd like to be able to attach minimal um, uh, gold prospecting equipment to my regular pack. Um, I've got a 14 inch pan, it, it's awkward in a backpack, it takes up too much room, but if I could hang it off the side, then I would solve my problem of having my camping pack on me but nothing to prospect with. Because again, if I, if I come to a creek and, and I set up camp, what if there's no gold there? What if there, I have to go three miles upstream before I find something, a, an indicator rock or what have you, and that's where I'm going to set up camp. So anyway, I'm talking too long. Basically, I was trying to find a way to store this and to also be functional for me out in the bush. So I got my paracord off the screen here, and I'm going to bring in these two uh, carabiners, carabiners, rock climbing clippy things. And so be using two of these. Um, this doesn't require any braiding, it uh, requires pretty much minimal effort um, and hopefully uh, if, if I do this correctly you'll be able to dispense it like a, a spool. So I'm basically just going to do a wrap on it with these as anchors. So let me see here. I want to basically loop up. What I've been doing is looping up about half of it. So I'm starting here with my knee. Let's do a simple tie off here. It's a simple overhand knot times two. Okay, it's about that big. So the finished item is going to be about that long. And what I'm going for is essentially it's going to be a, a um, bungee cord, except it's not flexible. Well, it's flexible, but it's not uh, springy. And so I'm just going to wrap this off. And don't worry, I like the cooking shows. I have an already prepared product off to the side. You don't have to suffer through all of this. But I do need to show you how I'm getting it to the spot where I just wrap it off. And so by keeping my knees slightly ajar, I have spaces here. Wrap this down a little bit more. Okay. I got over half of it on here. I'm sure it looks like I have over half of it on here anyway. So at this point, 
Carabiner, Carabiner. I don't know. I have a hard time with words. That goes on one side. This one here on the other side. And so what we have is this is the finished, uh, or not finished, but this is you're ready now at this point to do the finishing part. So we got this, the thread is over on this side. And then what I'm doing is kind of pulling it down a little bit tight. And I'm simply getting a good wrap around it. And then a second wrap. Kind of pull this to make sure these stay somewhat in line. And then from here, I run the thread through. The thread, it basically has a rectangular shape to it. It's kind of boxy. And so it's very easy for you to, to lay it on there, flat side down, and it'll make smooth, uh, uh, smooth um, wrap all the way down. And you can do this by doing it in your hand and running along your finger so you know that's flat applying to it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not. but And then when you get to that point, all you do is you just simply twist. And we're going to twist this up. And what it's going to do with the amount that we have here is probably going to at least go down to here and maybe back up a little bit. And what the finished product looks like on this is of this. So you can see we've got the clips on either side. We have a very strong cord here. It is flexible. It will bend up very comfortable to my hand. I made it a little bit shorter so it's a little bit thicker. The wrap went back and forth on this I believe three times before I finally tied it off. It's a simple tie off and you want to make it simple so that you have an easy, if you need it uh, out somewhere, you just simply pull on this, undo a simple knot and then you can pull it off. Now and because it spins around it, you can pull this, pull it off and this spins in your hand. And it's like a spool of thread. So what this is useful for, uh, for my, my primary issue which is my concern of my dogs, is this. When I travel in the country or in the forest or someplace I'm not familiar with where there's not a lot of people and there's big critters and rattlesnakes, I always travel with a spear in my hand or a walking stick or um, it basically I use, an, I call it a snake stick and it's essentially taking the end of a stick and opening it up like a spear gill, if you will, when you're spear fishing it has four, four points on it. So uh, basically I like to travel with one of those because I use that primarily if I need to, to get snakes away from me and my dogs. So if I'm in a park that requires leashes, and it's probably a good idea if I'm in an unfamiliar area so I don't want my dogs to get run off and get bit by a snake because that's my primary concern out there. I've got uh, her leash, basically her leash. I get his leash. Boom. And so I've got the leashes here, the dogs are on the end of this leash. And I've got a way that in one hand I can comfortably control two dogs with my one uh, left hand. This is my right handed. And in my right hand I have my walking stick or my fish stick, snake stick, whatever you want to call it. And so with that I can get on down the road and, and uh, I think I've solved both problems. Now the dogs of course are going to they're gonna tangle up and go over each other and whatever and I can simply correct that by twisting this in my hand. Now this also serves a few other functions. Um, we'll come back to them. Well, we'll do the dog thing right quick. We'll stay on that thing. So I get to a location and um, I'm in a state park that requires a leash uh, or I'm in an area where I'm worried about coyotes and uh, rattlesnakes getting after my dogs. Um, I have everything that I need to make a dog run. And basically by dog run is I would pull this out, disassemble the, the thread and tie it off between two trees that are up to 50 feet apart when minus the room you need to tie it off. So you're looking at basically up to about 50 feet in either direction and these are six feet long and so basically I would use this clip put the, just like so and run the thread through it so my dogs could travel freely 50 feet in either direction and if these are six feet long they could travel six feet this way or six feet that way. So, you know, rough math, 60, 60 feet times 12 feet, what's up dude, is about 600 feet and they would have plenty of room to get around and be fine. It's the size of a small house and my house is about 600 feet. So they would have the ability to chill off in that area while I do other things like gold prospecting. So with a clip like this, you know, multifunctional, multi-purpose, and you know, again, this is just simply a way to store the rope. Uh, by doing this, here I have my trusty Garrett gold pan. 
Um, this is all I need to find out if there's gold in a creek. If I, if I find there is gold in a creek, and then I have other equipment to support operations of taking uh, soil out from behind a boulder, whatever the case may be. This is dirty. A little soap and water, just like me. Um, so basically, I want to be able to carry this with me but because of the size of it. It's hard to get it into the pack, and I can't justify putting something this awkward in my pack when I'm basically living out of my backpack. So, but if you have one of these guys here, basically I can just hook this into the hole and hang this onto my clip and it hangs off the back of my pack. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You're in my shot, dude. Say goodnight, Grayson. So, we have the, uh, as far as prospecting, this will handle anything as far as uh, strapping anything to my pack, hanging off the side of the pack, and if I don't need to use it, I can drop this into my pack, basically, and you can see it's taking up a little more space than the actual uh, uh, cordage, basically. So it's minimal space. Um, you can, of course, do this with others. I was in a dollar store, and they had 50 feet of this twine here. It's not cooking twine, even though it's it's made exactly the same way, but some damn fool wouldn't color it so you can't cook with it. Uh, but it is 50 feet. Again, you can do the same thing with it. Um, this here is one that I'm going to use uh, for my, I'm going to be camping uh, pretty much if you're in Colorado, it's bear country everywhere. So we're going to be in bear country and so I have my food rope or whatever it's called here. And this is a standard rope that I'm going to throw over the top of a branch of a tree. Your food needs to be at least 20 feet off the ground and at least 10 feet away from a tree trunk. And so basically uh, this will be primarily used for storing my food in the air. And this, I can just put on that rope here and then attach my bag to it where I'm going to have my food secured in here. And so I have this um, uh, rope here that I can work with at my cook site. Now my cook site is going to be um, generally anywhere from 150 meters to 300 meters away from my sleep site. Uh, bears have a sense of smell and I know this from living in the mountains. Uh, they can smell things from five miles away. So you want to make sure your food is a long way away from you, uh, preferably downwind, so they don't walk through the camp to get to the food. Anyway, so this satisfies that the, uh, the issue of storage, in my opinion, and also uh, functionability. I know there's other things that I'm leaving out here. Can't recall what it is. Cover the dog, run, cover that. Nope, nothing I got at all. So anyway, if you have a cordage, if you have this uh, a paracord and you're looking for a way of storing it, but something that is functional, that you can still get a good use out of it, um, you can always go with this. Of course, you can uh, when do your wrap it around your knee, when you wrap it around your knee, uh, you can do it higher up on the knee and make it shorter and make it thicker. Might make it more compact for your uses. Oh, I remember what the other thing was. Uh -huh. So you're up backpacking and you're coming back to your car and these parking lots in the middle of nowhere and they're not lit. So it could be kind of, I don't know, make you a little bit nervous. Um, put your keys on the end of this thing and you go to wonking on somebody and you knock them upside the head with that thing or in the face, man, they're, they're going to leave you alone for sure. And the other thing too is if you're in bear country or around rattlesnake, you want to make a noise with it. So if you're using this for some kind of a dog leash, and you got your two dogs on here that are leashed up, or you could also do this, use this for a single. You only have one dog. Excuse me, dude. So this, this also you could do it as one, put your hand through there. And as you're walking, if you have your keys on here, you got you know, maybe put a bell on that in addition to it. You got your bear bell, and that's going to let anything know that can hear this from, I don't know, an animal can hear that from far away. Yeah, it's driving you crazy. Yeah. So far enough away that you got time to think about what's going on. So anyway, just wanted to kind of share that with you. And again, when you're going back to your car, self defense, man, everything needs to be multifunctional. Cool. Thanks for watching.